Hey everyone, this is Jackson. Um, I decided to start a new series of videos um, for this channel. The idea is going to be that I'm just going to kind of investigate new tech as I find it. Um, and kind of the idea is like you'll be following along as I'm investigating it for the first time as well. Obviously I'll be doing a lot of editing so you're not watching me you know, download files or uh, take too many wrong turns. I, I would like to leave some of the wrong turns in though just to show you kind of what it's like to um, investigate tech for the first time. Like everybody runs into problems when they're trying to get something working, right? So I figured, uh, I don't know, one of the problems I have with like modern tech videos is they're too polished. They don't show all the gory details of how, they just show the end state of something, right? Um, so I wanted to kind of uh, go through all the gory details as I'm investigating some tech. Um, for the first video, I found this very interesting, um, it was like a Linux uh, spreadsheet from a super sharp PhD. He's working on like uh, high performance computing at a national laboratory. And I guess he gave a presentation and somebody put his slides online. Um, so it's got a bunch of like super interesting Linux command stuff. Um, so I went through that and we'll be going through that together. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to the guy, so I'll link to his uh, bio in the bottom of the video as well. Um, I'm still working on the format of all these. Uh, I just really just threw it together just to throw something up there because I, I think it's it'll be fun, right? Like I, I like checking on new stuff all the time and I'm constantly on the lookout for new technologies so I figured um, you know why not include YouTube in that uh, so but anyway I mean it is new uh, I am trying out a new format I, I'm to totally open to suggestions so you know if I'm doing something you don't like um, definitely you know leave a comment and I you know I'm more happy to discuss it or you know change something uh, to please the audience. <laughs> uh, anyway, so without further, further ado, let's jump right in. So um, this is the uh, PowerPoint that I was talking about before. Uh, you can see the guy works at Oak Ridge National Labs. Um, it's got a bunch of like really useful stuff in it, so uh, we're just going to go through it kind of from the top down. Um, at the very end, I uh, there's a, like a bunch of like, uh, he gives like a bunch of uh, practice questions or something like that. And I didn't go through those, but uh, I think maybe if there's interest, I'll do that in a follow-up video or something like that. Um, for now, I'm, uh, since I'm running on Mac and these are like, you know, it's like a Linux uh, tutorial kind of thing. What I did is I uh, uh, set up a quick Docker with uh, Ubuntu running in it. Um, but you'll see that causes me quite a bit of problems because like the the docker image that I installed doesn't have anything in it <laughs> So I like every single command the guy uh, Wants you to like run doesn't exist as you can see here, right? W gets not working curls not working. So I'm like, oh great. How do I how do I fix this? I mean I quickly deduced like okay There's a problem here, but even like apt get wasn't working in the in the docker Container so I had to go figure out okay, like how the heck do I get this working? Um, but like, so he gives a link to these test files, right? And so I w get the link thinking like, oh, maybe the test files are there. But it turns out what's actually there is a git repo. So, I mean, I tried pulling down. Like I'm realizing this right now going like, oh, man. So one thing I like heard a lot about, and I've heard people doing this before, but I'd never done it myself, was these like CLI based web browsers. Uh, so he mentions it here and I was like, dude, why not? I'll check it out. That's what these videos are for, right? Is things I normally wouldn't have time on the job to kind of like just toy around with, like a text-based web browser. <laughs> uh, I figured, you know, now's as good a time as any to check it out. It was actually kind of cool. Um, it was easier to use than I kind of expected, right? Uh, like the left and right arrows were front, forward and back on the page. Um, and then once you highlighted a link and hit enter, you, you were taken there directly. It was almost like... Uh, viewing the web the web and on in vim or something um the thing is like I, i'm not sure how many like in this case there was a text-based version of npr already available and so i'm not sure like how many websites actually provide a user-friendly 
version of their website for a text-based browser, right? So, anyway. All right, enough web browser. Uh, oh, this was another thing. I didn't know how to do the meta keys on the Mac terminal. So I, I developed in Linux all through college, and so I always gotten used to that alt, left, arrow, right, arrow thing. Yeah, that. And I could not for the life of me. <laughs> when I got issued a Mac for work, I couldn't figure out how to get that working again. And so I finally just gave up and was like, ah, fine. And then when I opened up this slide and he was like, oh yeah, if you want to do this in Mac, here's how to do it. I was like, thank you, dude. <laughs> Saved me so much time. Because I can't tell you how useful that is, like to be able to jump through words like that, through the all arrow keys. Uh, I know how to do it in, in uh, Linux as well. I don't know how to do it in Windows. You'll have to look it up yourself. Uh, it might be the same command string, but anyway, I was like, dude, thank you. Uh, he shows a couple other ones, like how to delete words and things like that, which uh, they're not as useful to me, at least, maybe because I don't really remember them, but that alt one is like life-saving to be able to skip around like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, this stuff. This, I, I really like this stuff, uh, particularly like sudo, like the double uh, bang, right? Um, that, that one's super useful. If like you run a command and then forget to type sudo in front of it, right? You can just type sudo bang bang and boom, it'll rerun that, the previous command. It's super useful for that stuff. Um, I also, I didn't, wasn't aware of these other ones, right? The, the bang bang, I just kind of picked up, you know, through work and hanging out with other people talking about Linux, but, uh, these ones are useful too. So I'm, I'm probably going to start using those as well. Um, there was one, oh, the, uh, tag, the, the command tag thing. I, I was trying to like alias that and I'll show, show, I'm not going to edit that part. I was like, I think it's kind of useful to see like all the troubles I go through trying to alias that. Um, but that, I thought that was kind of a cool idea as well. Like you could add these little comments at the end of your commands and find them later. So yeah, you can see here I'm running his little example of like, uh, running the entire previous command, but switching out the first command, right? So you could do tail rather than grep, things like that. Oh yeah, here's another thing, like this alt um, period thing. I thought that was cool too. Like uh, you can get the the arguments of the previous command just by typing alt period. Like that was cool. I even tried to do like the nth argument thing as well. I, I, I think, yeah, that worked too. But it was like, I don't know, that to me is like if there's too many keys involved in a hot key I'm not gonna grab for it or I'm not gonna remember to do it and so I just I'll probably make a mental note of like the alt period thing but not the other ones oh yeah yeah this is cool too like usually I use touch for this like to create an empty text file or whatever but you can actually use the uh, directed pipe too which I thought was kind of cool here what I'm doing is I'm like making sure that the uh, whether or not it needs a space because he didn't put a space in his so i was like i wonder if that space actually needs to be there or not like i don't know this is how i learn things right is you just kind of explore and see what's happening right in this case i'm checking the metadata on the file to see if it got newly created after i used a space versus not using a space anyway uh so this is the command tag stuff i was talking about before i thought this was kind of an interesting idea i wasn't sure if it was like i mean it seems to be like a linux like a built-in Linux thing, but at the same time, I also am like, well, technically you could just grep your history and grep for that tag thing, right? And find your previous command that way too. But yeah, anyway, I thought this was a cool idea for sure. But I had quite a bit of problems with it, right? Like if I followed his example directly, um, it was working and I was like, oh, that's really, really cool. So then I was like, well, I would like to alias that so I don't have to remember bang dollar sign or we'll, we'll do that so i started like figuring out how to do i think you can see here i'm like googling how to do the tagging and then i tried to put it in an alias and for some reason like bash wasn't finding the alias like it, it wasn't working so i just shelved it for now but there's something i'd like to go back to after the video is like figure out how do you how do i alias this right so you can see here like bang question mark will allow you to like re, re bring up that tagged command again which it works here when I do it see this is which is awesome right so I was like oh cool like I want to alias that to like T or something like that for tag um, but that was not working for me 
uh, again, if somebody knows how to do this in the command, in the comment, like leave a comment, uh, tell me why I wasn't able to alias this because uh, I'd like to know. I'm I'm hoping I'll go like figure this out myself afterwards. So now we're getting into like pipes, things like that, right? Which are uh, I don't know. It's like what Linux is all about, right? Is like or I guess what makes it super powerful is being able to you know redirect output from one command into another and you know all that stuff um we probably won't talk too much about this just because it's a kind of like well-known thing right there's not too many two tidbits that he's going to provide us in this i thought this uh diff command was kind of cool actually like you could do a diff of two command outputs right in this case he's showing you how to do, to uh pipe the ls from one directory and the ls from another directory into as arguments to the diff command that was pretty cool uh, you can see here like the diff of these two directories that was awesome here's a cool command uh where he shows you like how to get the top 10 most frequently used commands uh, i thought that was like a really cool use of awk here that he's like showing you how to some some like the second argument for all the arguments in your history right thought that was really cool in this slide he makes like a really good point uh, at least to me as well it's like probably one of the hardest things to do as a uh, on the command line is like figure out when a command can take direct arguments or when you need to use xargs for certain commands right like he shows word count you can just pass the command or you can pipe it in but like the same thing doesn't work for tr the same thing doesn't work for echo so it's like kind of sometimes difficult to figure out like when do i need to pipe things in when do i need to use a directed pipe when can i just pass things as arguments you know i do kind of agree with him on that one so here he he starts talking about xargs right as like a solution for this problem when you can't figure out when you need to pass things as arguments or you can pipe them in or whatever um, but which is i mean cool that's interesting i think most people already know about that but he uses that to lead in to talk about parallel which i'd seen it like i'd seen other people use parallel here and there uh but i was like really i didn't look into it myself right i was just like okay cool there's a some sort of parallel command right that's awesome um but i hadn't really looked into it myself and he goes through it here in detail and i was like kind of blown away this was one of the cooler things i found in the in these slides like uh because of his slides i was able to finally go like oh i should look into all these things that i've just like been passively using um and parallel was one of those examples so i i thought this was like really really cool basically it allows you to run commands in parallel uh, but they get treated as if they're running sequentially in your your command line so you're not even aware that this is a parallel task that's happening uh it's pretty cool so you can see a couple of the examples uh, up for like using parallel, right? In this case, he's taking a bunch of files and moving them into a web directory. So he's finding all the files and then moving them into a web directory. And that's all hap those moves are all happening in parallel, which is like really cool. Uh, same, likewise here, he's, he's removing a bunch of JPEGs based on the name and those are happening in parallel as well, right? So you can think of there's a bunch of a bunch of things you can run on Linux, right? That would all be parallel. It's like, I'm, su I'm surprised that more people don't use this in their commands. I guess they just assume like most commands are gonna execute quick enough where like the parallelization is not gonna mat matter so much. Where he's a high high uh, performance computing guy, you know, I'm, I'm sh positive like he, he has a lot, he, he's much more sensitive to like, uh, CPU bottlenecks and things like that, right? So I, I bet he, he uses parallel like much more frequently. So this section is actually about Tmux. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on Tmux, but he has a really cool um, like collaborative editing uh, example of Tmux uh, that I'm actually I'll, I'll definitely show that because I, I thought that was a really cool little gem in the, in these slides as well. So this is the Tmux example I was talking about right here. Um, basically what you can do is you can pass Tmux a socket file uh, that we'll use for the communications and then two different terminals can connect to it, which I thought was really cool. Uh, it makes sense, right? <laughs> In hindsight, you're like, oh yeah, duh, of course it could do that. But uh, 
I just never thought to do it myself. So here's that's what I'm doing here, is I've got two Tmux uh, connections going to the temp collab file, and here you can see I'm gonna open up in a in like a split screen mode, so you can see all the things I'm typing in one terminal session are showing up in the other terminal session as well. See, which that, it's pretty cool, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, I'll let that finish. So this section had a bunch of cool little math things, uh, like for example the shuffle thing right here. It'll give you a random number between 1 and 100. I thought that was pretty sweet. Uh, you can see here I'm watching it, so I'll just like continually generate new random numbers every two seconds. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool thing. Uh, there's another one like this built-in calculator, that, that one was kind of interesting as well. The shuffle thing was like kind of my favorite thing is out of all these cool little math things that he shows though. Uh, another thing is uh, this like simple server, Python simple server thing. Like I, I was already aware of it, but I figured I'd point it out in case other people weren't. I, you know, that's always a useful thing to have around as well. I really like this uh, like <laughs> gen password generation thing. Uh, I just recently installed Pass on my Mac, uh, so I actually will probably start using these to generate passwords. Uh, it's, I'm sure there's going to be some. Uh, security guy on this video telling me how stupid I am for using uh, randomly generated Linux passwords because it's they're not t totally random or whatever right but uh, I'll do it anyway screw him <laughs> uh, but yeah I thought these were all kind of cool so yeah here he, he gives a bunch of like you know other things to check out um, and like I said before he gives you like some practice examples uh, if this video has a lot of interest, you know, I'll be more than happy to dive into these extra resources. Um, obviously, the slides will be linked below the video, so you can check those out yourself as well. But, you know, if you want someone to keep you honest and uh, give you a bit of a community to check these things out, then uh, give the video a like and subscribe and uh, let me know in the comment below and we'll definitely uh, check out these extra resources. So that's everything for this episode. Um, I think the main takeaways from Lee were probably the command tagging thing. That was pretty cool. And then uh, also parallel. Like I said, I'd seen that before, but I hadn't really dived into like how to use it or what it does or anything like that. Um, we skipped the practice questions, but you know, if anyone wants me to go over those, I'd be more than happy to. Um, leave a comment. Uh, letting me know if you learned anything from this video and then also if you want us to go through those practice questions. Okay, till next time. See you then.